stuff happening in the news and some stuff happening in the news. Uh, <laughs> uh, so first is that New York State allows for illegal immigrants to get driver's license starting next week. So uh, although the city has already been ahead of stuff like this with the IDNYC to try and help uh, give identification to those who are undocumented so they can get certain you know, loans and you know, apartments, things like that, it'll be official as of next week that the entire state will start allowing official state licensing for those who are illegal, right? Um, and I, you know, I, to be honest, I hate saying undocumented. If you don't have documents, you're illegal, all right? Use illegal. You are not legally here. That's literally the term for illegal. A crime is when you do something that's what? Illegal. <laughs> OK? So and, and why is it illegal? Because it's not legally allowed. That's, so I'm sorry if you're offended by the word, but that's just kind of how English works. Cool? Cool. Because your immigration is an undocumented immigration, which means you don't have the paperwork. It means that you are illegally here. So an illegal immigrant. I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just saying it is what it is. Right, none of that PC culture on this show. Sorry. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so that's the thing. So shout out to New York State for allowing that to happen because, you know, now all of our peoples and, you know, where, wherever you're from, if you hear, you hear. Get that ID. They can't even really be kicking you out of airports like that no more. Yeah. <laughs> Only seven states do this so far. And yet we still behind on the weed thing. Think about that. Think about that. Trump's own state allows immigrants to get licensed. But we still can't smoke weed legally here. Think about that. I'm scared of all the immigrants and all the rape from this, but you can't smoke no weed. It's stupid. But speaking of Trump, best thing in the news. Uh, there's a lot going on with Trump and the impeachment and all that, but no. The only thing worth mentioning this week is that Donald Trump admits to dreaming about booty hate. Right? <laughs> so Pete Boutier is the openly gay Democrat running for president. I mean, literally, that's all we can say about Pete Boudier because nothing else about him is interesting, right? Even him up on the mic, he's an intelligent man. He, he has a, 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 a bunch of pretty good ideas, but he's not charismatic at all. It was like pretty much running John Kerry up there again. No charisma, but he's gay. So, you know, yeah, you know, that, that's pretty much what's riding him over right now. And? Pete Boudier heard that Donald Trump is dreaming about him, and he feels very uncomfortable by the thought of it. So Trump can't even bag a gay guy desperate for the presidency. <laughs> this, is, this is just a sad day. And this is why he had to grab him by the poo-poo. <laughs> but yeah, that's my favorite Trump news this week. That is, that is a, that is go I'm, not, I'm not even making this up. Trump admits this in an interview. And you know, and more so in the context that he would love to run against him because pretty much he knows he can beat him. That, that's what I mean. That's pretty much what it is. He knows he can beat him. But you know, it's just mad funny. He said he dreamt about the gay guys. Of all the guys, it's the gay guys. Great, it's great. Love it. <laughs> How many Republicans feel uncomfortable now? <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so yeah, there's that. Um, then another piece of local news, just because he's from here. Uh, you ever, so hip hop artist Cameron thinks that he's an official historian and has the nerve to say that there is no evidence that dinosaurs are here. Right, right. Of all things, Cameron, the rapper, the man who can't even spell Cameron right, thinks that he's the guy to say that dinosaurs are here. His, excuse, his thing is, I'm not saying they weren't real. I'm not saying that they were fake. But like, you know, there's no real evidence. There's no proof. He's like, there's a bunch of bones in the museum, <laughs> but that's not proof that dinosaurs were here. They're just some bones that people put together and made into a shape. I know celebrities have a lot of, a lot of power for, to create thought in the masses, but Cam Ron? Man, you can't even spell your name. Stop trying to comment on things that are way out of, stick to rapping. Just stick to rapping, all right, homie? Just stick to rapping. Because this is the type of stuff that's just going to get a whole bunch of people in Harlem ranting and chanting and screaming nonsense. I told you, if Cameron knows, everybody knows, there ain't no, I don't want to hear that. 
I don't need that on Christmas. I don't need that on all the holidays when I'm in art. Don't need that, bro. So just shh, just shh, shh, shh. All right? All the thoughts, shh. If you really feel some type of way, put it in a song at a hot beat so everyone can ignore your words, and we just keep it pushing, all right? That's, that's, how, we, that's how we do this process. But don't be going out there making official statements and then going to have the whole hood talking. No, I don't need that. Nobody needs that. No, this is the, this is the type of stuff that really is. Is he hot? I, I don't know. It was in an interview for for some sort of a podcast or something. So who who knows? But that's, that's podcast. yeah, that's definitely that's definitely something like we smoking and we just you know having some deep thoughts. It's like when you're dating and a girl's like, I like a guy who can have a deep conversation, and what she wants to talk about is like why are you so concerned about this guy? And if you really break up, like that <laughs> like they're all dead. What? <laughs> like yeah, no. Nah, not with it. Anyway, moving on to something more positive. There's a man named Freddie Figures, right? Uh, sound, or spelled more like the word version with the N in front, but said more like figures as in numbers. Um, he's a multi-millionaire who was a dumpster baby. So why am I talking about this? For some reason, he's been really popular in the news lately. And simply, it's a story about someone who really overcame every possible odd. I mean, dude shouldn't have made it to the second day alive, <laughs> right? And is a multimillionaire at the age of 30, wow. right? Exactly. This, this just reminds you, you can really just go from rags to riches in America still, even as a minority. However, this is also a lesson for all y'all who are trying to get rid of y'all babies. Don't just throw them in a dumpster. If you're gonna, if you gonna get rid of them, get rid of them. Cause when you regret the fact that your child is not a multimillionaire, don't come running back to him thirty years later. You know what I'm saying? You got rid of your kid, <laughs> adopting or whatever. Don't come looking for them now. They got some money. You a deadbeat dad left your baby moms with the baby. Don't come back when baby now has a, a, a lot of money in the bank account because he, he went to work and mama held him down all them years. You ain't entitled to crap. <laughs> You will live the rest of your life with the resentment. So either hold down the responsibility or never come looking back with regrets. That's all I'm saying. All right. Now, in the world of science, recently there was an eruption in New Zealand in a very well-known volcano that people, ooh, you know, normally visit to, you know, either study or just to see because it's, you know, a volcano, right? You know, those crazy people want to go see that goddamn volcano. Recently erupted. One thing of note, though, why I'm saying this is that with all the equipment that they have, knowing that this could be a very active volcano and stuff like that, no one saw this coming. So this is just a PSA, a nice friendly reminder. Stay away from some goddamn volcanoes! Like, what the hell is wrong with people? I don't even know. I'm just like, yo, you can't predict Mother Nature. You can't. All the machines we have, right? We still get the weather wrong every day on news, right? We, we still we, we can't figure out volcanoes. Earthquakes be popping up out of nowhere. Earthquakes be popping up places sometimes where there's no seismic lines or anything. Look, Mother Nature and she gonna do it. Don't predict it. Whatever, just caution yourself at all times. Stay away from the damn volcano. Just stay away. Don't go near. That was a lot of smoke. But that, and that's the thing. They this is a volcano known that it could go off anyway. You would figure, you know, the seismic activity and stuff like that could be picked up and you can get people and evacuate. Nah, bro. It's just, that's it. It's, it. That's it. Stay away from volcanoes. If you live in Hawaii or places like that, stay down the hill. Don't go up the hill. I mean, you can't really get away, but you could have time to get away. You see what I'm saying? Like, just stay away from volcanoes. I don't know why in 2019... Going in 2020, this is something that needs to be told to people. Stay away from volcanoes. Stay away from volcanoes. Y'all talking about his Stay away from volcanoes. He's going to an active volcano in the Philippines this May. You see, and this, I, I still have to say this. December the year before. That's the way, yo, bro, stay away from volcanoes. You have too much melanin to not have the brain cells to not go to a volcano. Like, oh my God. Ridiculous. This is what I have to work with, I kid. 
You were lucky he doesn't have a mic right now. I swear to God. <laughs> but seriously, folks, like, stay, if you can't predict this, stay away from volcanoes. I don't know what you have to say. No, it's something, it's something more lighthearted because I, I need, I need, well, God damn, we going to a goddamn Rocky volcano. I might not have a job in that next <laughs> night. You see this crap? Look, so Pringles is going to be doing something absolutely disgusting, but for all the right reasons. And they're making a pickle flavored chip in honor of pickled rip from Rick and Morty. I mean, maybe this will be, it's, it's going to be a limited time. Time of the Super Bowl in early fe um, in early February, um, but I mean maybe pregnant chicks will like it. I know a lot of pregnant women who have like a thing or craving for pickles, but pickle flavored chips. I I'm gonna buy it. Now I'm not even sure if I'm gonna eat it. I'm gonna buy it just to get the container because it has Rick's face on it. That's a collectible right yeah. there. But I, I'm pickle flavored. I might buy. It. I just want. If that's nasty, I'm pouring all the chips out and just saving the container. Nah, yeah, I'm, 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 anything Pickle Rick, I, I want my Pickle Rick. I love Pickle Rick. Pickle Rick is awesome. That's the best episode of Rick and Morty, uh, who I will do a full review on when the season is officially over. But yeah, Pickle Rick chip. Uh, and Toys R Us is getting a lot of scrutiny, right? After filing for bankruptcy and only coming out with pop-up shots, there are a couple of Toys R Us left. And all of them, for some reason, have high-tech security now. I guess they're so broke, they got to make sure nothing is stolen. But people are upset because the security they feel is uh, too much. They feel that it's intrusive and invasive and children monitored. The people with the stickiest fingers, literally and figuratively, are children. So I'm sorry, if anybody's going to a toy store about to walk out with some toys stealing, it's a goddamn kid. However, the censors are only really meant to pick up stuff, like pick up movement from creatures and, and, and objects over four feet tall. Now, to this, I learned a very uh, disturbing fact is that most 10 year olds now are five feet tall. Now, this, in relation to the story, is why parents are mad because, you know, they still have people who aren't even teenagers that can be monitored by the other. Bull crap. I'm mad because now I found out that I'm barely taller than a goddamn ten year old. Who wants to start all the time you hear? I'm barely taller than a ten year old. What kind of crap is this? You stop growing, you damn giants! <laughs> stop! I'm about to start kicking shins soon. What kind of crap is this? When these are definitely gonna be taller than me, they only tell you, oh god, what kind of world is I living in now? You have to, oh, this, is, this is all real, folks. This is, oh, God. Uh, and uh, Bacardi has a recently released for the holidays. Coquitos going to have vanilla and cinnamon all already up and in and whatever. But really, like, Bacardi? Would, would you drink Bacardi Coquito? I don't drink, but I won't drink Bacardi. I wouldn't drink Bacardi Coquito either. That's Bacardi. Double. That's double. I mean, because Bacardi, okay, so Coquito, I know a lot more people who make Coquito with the rum, right? And not to say that there haven't been people who've tried to use other liquors, because we all know somebody who, whatever's on sale, is going in that bottle, right? But the Bacardi's more so known for the vodka, right? I like Bacardi vodka. I know they do rum, but I like Bacardi vodka. I don't, I don't know if they're gonna, it's going to be good. I don't really drink Coquito. I'm not an eggnoggy kind of person. But I figure I can get your input. So I want you to tell me what you think of, Co of Bacardi Coquito. If you ever get a chance to try it, just pop it on the page, real review on Facebook, or, you know, hit up the Instagram, Prometheusuko. And if you can't spell it, it'll pop up later when we do the fans of the week and crap. Uh, but yeah, just let, let me know what you think of that. Now, that's all the news, news sort of thing, minus the, uh, oh, there's now a really awesome. Uh, forklift. So if you still haven't bought all your stuff, especially people who are Prime people on Amazon, Amazon has a legitimate forklift that's about four feet tall that can <coughs> actually pick stuff up for little kids ages three and up. It, 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 I, honestly, if I was a kid, this would be what I'm asking for Christmas. So if you haven't done all your shopping yet, you might want to get your kids a forklift. But th th there's some pretty fun fake news out there that I think we should talk about. So. First, supposedly there's a there was a woman 
uh, Laura Martinez at a Walmart in Union City, California, who who was arrested after using multiple sex toys in the middle of the Walmart. <laughs> the thing about it is, all right, this for sure is fake news, right? Looked into it, whatever. It's not a real news story. But if you look at the picture of the supposed Laura Martinez, she looks like she would do something like that at the Walmart. That is a really great mugshot to this fake news story. So if you heard that this, this is a story that's not real, but I can see where you believe it because she does look like somebody that would probably use some stuff in the middle of a Walmart. So just hold on. <laughs> right? Bro, come on now. Then the other story is uh, a <laughs> this is probably my favorite thing because of how true it is, and I'm sure Charles has experienced this. Uh there is an there's an article. Uh, that's a, it, it, it is fake news, but I think this is still a pretty good story to explain how most men feel in a relationship about a wife who has yet to discover that if she just watches the movie, it will answer all of her questions. <laughs> I don't know if anybody's gone on a date or you know with their girlfriend ever. You trying to watch the movie? And and your in your 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 other half is asking you why is something happening, what is going on, X Y and Z, and you're like, bro, I'm just watching this for the first time, like you. I don't even know you. Can you let me watch the movie? Maybe I can answer the question for you after. Or if you just watch the movie, it will answer itself. Please do. In about two hours, maybe maybe an hour and a half, maybe even longer, it presents questions, and then by the end answers said questions. And when it doesn't. People complain. Like, that's just how it works. But the person watching it, 99% of the time had nothing to do with creating the movie. We can't help you. Like, we just can't. Right? Sometimes I can understand if you ask questions at the end of the movie, like, oh, I didn't understand why such and such happened, and maybe one of the two of y'all can figure it out. But I know in my experiences, it is, and I, I, I'm pretty good at movies, right? I figure out a lot of the twists and turns before the end of the movie. Still, it's like, yo, just watch the movie. At this point, I'm trying to make sure my prediction is right. You interrupted me. But this is one of those things. We're going to go to our last commercial break. And when we come back, we're going to get through all these things, all right? Don't get it twisted, yo. There's a difference between riders and those that's just along for the ride. For the ride. For the ride. For the ride. You got nothing nice to say to have a nice day. Then you find Shante, Hollis crew, Runny Ray. I say whatever's on my mind, I'm kind of Kanye. Fake city running down the ride, you kind of Pompeii. This is my heyday, y'all to catch a payday. Stay to the culture, currently it's kind of strong. Shakes, I notice them you stay foul, but dead prayers. I'm holding them you in bliss with sneak this to holding them for the weakness that they spit. I'm scolding them madman on the loose with beats and rhymes. Life is just a mountain, watch me. I'm gonna climb. Always been a hustler, I did my time. Never had a co defendant in my crime. Better ginger beer, whiskey, and some lime. Pony killer Deion Sanders in my prime. You got nothing nice to say to have a nice day. You got nothing nice to say to have a nice day. You got nothing nice to say to have a nice day. Stay. Just stay the hell up on my way and have a nice day. I was home invaded in my residence. Trap savages, thirsty for some dead presidents. Bang appointed at me, sitting real still sediment. Thought I'm about to kill a die, 35th president. Wasn't white boys, every one of them had melanin. Cops hype boy, cause it's nothing that I'm telling them. Kill instead of gelling them. Pistol pointed at me, bullets ready to fly. We in the third world, it's an eye for an eye. And will I ever catch you? Probably could if I tried. But I'm a cop, my blessings me, a monster gonna die. All right, so before we get to these movies, we're going to do the fans of the week. You got it up, Charles? 
All right. So I think first you should have Edward. Edward. Scott. Yep. So Edward Scott from Facebook. And he's been very active recently on, on all my platforms here on the LDM network. Uh, we got uh, May Richardson. She's next, and she's been pretty active the last few weeks as a new follower to the page, so thank you. Uh, on Instagram, we have uh, Randall, who's one of my friends from when I was working in Midtown. Really funny dude, and uh, he got one of his uh, memes up there. <laughs> yep. Yep. And then uh, we got Taliba Love, who's been a pretty consistent fan the last couple months. Uh, and uh, she, she too, with one of her quotes up there, she's very one of those inspirational type folks. Even, even the stuff she likes is more so my uh, less grimy stuff, <laughs> which is few and far between, but somehow, you know. Uh, and then, of course, uh, our picture of the week is something I feel very strong about, especially since. Uh, and I'm sorry. Um, we're all sorry. MySpace was the best of all of them. Uh, <laughs> essentially, it's uh, just a uh, picture of Tom and how he, uh, he never judged us. He never blocked us for our content. He never restricted what we could post. He was always there for us, and we let him down. Make MySpace Aww. great again. <laughs> I, mean, that, I mean, what more can I say about that? Poor, poor, poor Tom. He was all of our first friends, too, man. He was there, man. He was there throughout all of it, especially for those of us in middle school. Like, he was there for all the hormones, and we just, we just ditched him for some video games. Damn. Anywho. A bunch of stuff. I, I, I really wanted to look more into what was popping on uh, the, the foreign side of Netflix this week. So a lot of the stuff here was mostly stuff coming out of China. Um, some oldies, some new ones. I was just, I, I wanted to do something a little different. I, I was feeling martial artsy this week. Um, but there, there are a couple of U.S. things in here. Uh, so first is uh, a, a U.K. thing, actually. It's one, uh, you know, it's one of the few Christmas things I was willing to watch. It's called Await for the uh, Instructions. Essentially, a family gets trapped in a house. Uh, they are deciding whether or not it was something the government did to them or perhaps somebody who's going to hurt them or whatever. And the only thing that they can see is their TV giving them specific instructions. And the family fights amongst itself over whether or not to do what the instructions are telling them to do. Um, it's a real weird twist on the classic Birth of Christ story, as odd as that sounds. It turns from something you know, really more about the internal family structure into a weird sci-fi thing by the end. Still, though, it was highly entertaining. There are a lot of messed up jokes in it as far as racially offensive and family backstalking and all this other stuff. I think it's not for everybody. The pacing's a little off, so I give it a 3.5 out of 5. But a 3.5 means I think that you should still watch it. So await further notice should be watched. Then on the foreign side, uh, you have something called my schoolmate, the barbarian. It's, it's uh, from earlier in the 2000s. Uh, it's a Chinese flick about a kid who's a geek uh, learning how to fight in a school where pretty much fighting is the way you earn respect. Typical, typical, like you know, Asian drama kind of storyline. But it was really cute. It was really funny. Again, I don't think it's for everyone, and it takes a while to actually get to the point. So I give it a three out of five. It's not something I'm gonna tell you, you need to watch, but. You know, if it's on your list to watch when there's nothing else to watch, I think it's worth the time, especially if you like some good martial arts. It's pretty cool. The effects are really weird. It moves a little fast. It's kind of fun. Uh, next is a Jackie Chan wrote, um, called Railroad Tigers, uh, and it's a movie of his about kind of like post World War II China and a bunch of rebels who are trying to you know protect the people and stop the oppressive government kind of situation. It's a 3.5 out of 5. It's just really slow. It's a really slow movie, minus the action scenes. So, you know, if you, again, pacing is another problem, but a lot of these foreign movies is not built for the American audience, so the pacing is not built for an American audience. But the action's dope. It's amazing. It's a Jackie Chan movie. What do you expect, right? Like, if nothing else is good in it, if you can't even understand the words coming out of his mouth, his fist flying <laughs> is enough, right? <laughs> See, I just throw them in there. Slip it in there right there. All the corny jokes. Dad jokes, for sure. Not even a father yet. Uh, or at least as far as I know. Uh, then there's a movie called Trade, which is 
actually an older movie with uh, Michael Jai White and Tony Jaa in it. It's all about you know sex trafficking. The action sequences, again, they're solid. They're not even all that great, to be honest. They kind of felt a little less lower tier action than Ong Bak, the first one. Uh, and the story is pretty basic. It's, I give it a 3 out of 5 just because I find it entertaining. If you like a lot of the movies, like if you like a lot of those B action movies, this is for you. But this is definitely something you can skip. It's just that if you watch it, you know, it's for those, of, of, it's for those people who like that B movie action flick. And you all know what it is on Netflix with a lot of those B movies that are, are action flicks. And you just you just watch it, just see stuff blow up, people get knocked out. You know, like oh, he did like a triple spin before he kicked him in the face, like that sort of thing. That's that's all this movie is. It's not a, a solid movie. It's just it, it just is. Um, there's another Chinese movie called Brotherhood of Blades. That's a 3.5 out of 5. I think it's like again another too slow for America kind of thing, but it's a really good story. The action is sick. It's part just. One uh, this one's part two, but uh, th uh, it's it's just it feels kind of it, not exactly like Crouching Tiger, but it's one of those kind of movies. If you get what I'm saying, like you know, it's definitely very uh, more of their style of movie storytelling. But the action is is just dope. Every every time I heard clinging, it was like, oh, now it's time to pay attention, like really pay attention. Then, but the st I mean, the story was good. You know, sometimes you just kind of tune out because it's just a lot. It's a lot of talking. It's a lot of talking. And you just like I, I wanted the kung fu. Why is there so much talking? I want I want kung fu in a kung fu movie, right? Like that's it makes sense to me. Um, but then you know you switch it up. There's a uh, another retelling of a Bible tale called Samson. And I, I I literally just watched it just to see if they did anything interesting with it. It's a three out of five movie. You can skip it, but it's it is one of the less preachy Bible movies I've ever seen. And I kind of like when Samson gets his superpowers and he beats people up. It's kind of fun. It's really corny. Like, it felt like the old 1990s uh, Hercules, but it, it was worth a watch. I, I will admit, I did not feel like I wasted my time watching this movie. It's just, it's a Bible movie. You know how cliche those things can be. And if you believe in God, you know, one of those kind of whatever. I don't, so it's useless to me. But, uh, <laughs> you know, they tried. It, it wasn't too bad. Uh, we got another Fatal Attraction kind of flick. We Belong Together. A uh, pretty girl gets obsessed with her teacher, and she turns out to be crazy and tries to kill his ex and, and all of that. It's nothing new. It's just a lot of fun. And the crazy girl is hot. <laughs> so I, I would say watch it. You know, it's a typical black movie. Nothing bad about it, but definitely a lot of good. So watch it. Uh, Netflix also released a comedy series, a sketch comedy show, all black artists called Astronomy Club. I really wanted to like this. I really did. I literally watched six episodes of this and only laughed on the last of the six episodes. It was so bad. I'm giving it a 2.5 out of 5 just because the last episode that made me laugh was because they made fun of themselves. That's it. I look, so you acknowledge all the crap that you did before. But yeah, this is this is definitely a skip. Our last two movies, one from Netflix is Six Underground, Ryan Reynolds, new movie. Budget was crazy, action was sick, but I was falling asleep that first hour, even through some of the action sequences. It was just really, really slow. And then it finally got good, but it was really, really slow. So I give it a three out of five, it was really, really slow. Um, and then of course, the movie of the week, Jumanji 2. It's something that I didn't think would be that great. I thought it would be really simple. I actually really enjoyed it. Uh, I thought that the Danny DeVito, like pretending to be Danny DeVito bit would get old. It was funny throughout the movie. Um, there was a lot of good back and forth between Kevin Hart and Dwayne Johnson. A lot of good um, back and forth uh, with the other characters. They, uh, the characters even get some new abilities that become kind of funny. Um, jo the Jonas brother was you know, pretty good in it. They found a way to make a horse hilarious. It was it was a really good ride. I give it a four out of five. I think, of course, you know, a lot of it is very cliche, so I got to take up a point for that. It's predictable, but it was a fun movie, and it left me thinking that I could enjoy Jumanji three. To be honest with you, not even like oh, I love this movie so much, I want the next one, but just kind of how it ends off. And I'll leave you on that note. So uh, we'll catch you guys next week for the last show of the year. And until then. Peace. Uh,
Excuse me, I'm next in line. Move. Excuse me, I'm next in line. Watch out. Excuse me, I'm next in line. I said move.